Now, the sirtuins, they got their name because of a gene called sirtu in this yeast cell. And, it, and it's an acronym, Silent Information Regulator, number two, sir. Mm. And you might notice that I is very important, information. Mm. So the regulation of information was controlling the aging process in yeast. Mm. What it was doing was stabilizing the epigenome, basically telling the yeast cell which genes should be on and off to be healthy. And that became dysregulated over time. And one of the drivers of that misregulation and, and mess up was DNA damage. And so now the theory is that we have a lot of evidence from animals, people, that this is true for ourselves, that DNA damage drives changes to the epigenome, and that leads to cells losing their identity. So what I'm saying is that at the tippy top cause of aging, it boils down to a loss of information. I could write an equation for you. Um, it's basically this, the entropy loss of, it, of information. So what information am I really talking about? It's not the genetic information that we, that we struggle with. There are mutations for sure. Go out in the sun, you'll get mutation. But what's really driving aging, we find in my lab, is that it's the other type of information, the epigenetic information, which are the systems that read the DNA. Mm. I think of it as the software of the body that gets corrupted over time. I've used the analogy that if you, people can remember a compact disc, mm. the DNA would be the music encoded and the software, the, the epigenome is the reader of that music. And over time you get, you get scratches on the CD so you can't read the uh, information that well. And so we, what we've discovered was that not only can we accelerate that process by scratching up the CD or causing DNA damage that accelerates this process in animals and watch them get old, but we found that there's a backup copy of that information. Essentially, you can either polish the CD or another ma analogy would be you just reboot the software and now the system runs like it should. And that's how we got those blind mice to see again. Um, and it was a lot of trial and error. We failed for many years at this, but we hit upon a combination of using three genes that we turn on when we're embryos and keep us young when we're embryos, but we don't use them when we're adults. And so we turned on those three genes in the mouse's eye or in human cells or those mini brains. And we find that those three genes are sufficient to reset the age of the cell in a safe way. The cells don't become cancers. They don't lose their age back to zero. They go back about 70% in age and stop. And then we take away the system, we turn it off, and the cells and the eyes age out again. And it was that simple. And the, the cool thing about it is, A, that there is a backup copy. We didn't know where if there was. We still don't know where it is, by the way. We just know it exists somewhere in the cell. Um, and that it was really simple once you know how to do it. So this is um, an equation that uh, Claude Shannon came up with in the 1940s at MIT. This is what I think describes aging. Um, and I get a lot of chuckles when scientists see this because aging is thought to be something so complicated that you could never put it into an equation. But this essentially describes, or literally describes, uh, the theory of, uh, of noise being introduced into communication systems. And I, I have proposed and written about my hypothesis, which is called the information theory of aging, which is that we lose information. And that's essentially why we get old. Um, but importantly, what as I'll show you, I think there is a backup copy to the original information that we can restore and reset the age of the body and get out, get our function back. Uh, so what type of information am I talking about there are two main types of information in our bodies. The one that you would have probably guessed is the DNA, the genome, the blue strand there. But DNA isn't just a string of six foot of chemical in each cell. It's actually wrapped up in bundles uh, by these proteins here and they form chromosomes. And the way they're bundled or opened up uh, determines the type of cell that that cell will be and will remain. And you certainly don't want your brain turning into a liver anytime soon. And that's what this second type of information is called or, or does. It's called the epigenome. And the epigenome is different than the genome in that it's largely analog information. It's three-dimensional structure over you know, four dimensions over time. And it's vibrating very rapidly in the cell. The problem with analog information for anyone who's ever lived in the analog age tried to copy a cassette tape or Xerox something many times, photocopy it, uh, you know that it degrades and you get, you have a loss of information. 
And so what I'm saying is that I think a primary cause of aging, perhaps the primary cause is the loss of this structure right here, the three-dimensional structure of the genome. And, and from all that comes the diseases that we're familiar with and many of the other hallmarks of aging that you hear about in cells. Is the concept of information transmission and storage. And this uh, fellow up here was a professor, Claude Shannon. Uh, he was at MIT during the 1940s and spent much of his career trying to figure out how to transmit radio signals without it being lost along the way, which of course can cost lives in, as they did in World War II. So he came up with a mathematical theory of communication and it basically led to the internet that we use today. And what he, he said in this diagram, this is pulled straight out of his, at least the black part is pulled straight out of his paper from 1948. He said that you can have a transmitter and a receiver and there will always be noise, whether it's background radiation or something. Uh, but the problem is how do you have a perfect transmission? And he proposed that there would be this observer we now call the observer the backup copy or the TCP IP protocol of the internet. But he was the first to show, mathematically at least, that you could use a backup copy to reconstitute the original message. Um, and this is why we can no longer use the excuse that, oh, I didn't get your email. It always arrives, unfortunately. Um, but what I've done is I've added a concept of biology as I'm thinking about it currently. And that is that information either genetic or epigenetic, uh, is in a relatively pristine state when we're very young. And over time, you have, you have uh, aging. And what might be happening is that you lose information, whether it's genetic or epigenetic. And we don't know that what that is yet, um, for sure, especially the epigenetic component. Um, and perhaps is there in cells a reset switch? Can Did cells ever store a more youthful version of their uh, gene expression pattern, say, or their younger identity. And if they do, wouldn't it be amazing because then we could potentially tap into that. And as I show in this example of the eye, uh, reboot the system and get those cells to function like they were young again.